right here, several. There's two there. One there, one there, one there. I can do it. Birch trees everywhere. You know they're here, but you don't really pay attention to how many until you start looking for them. Lots of little ones growing. Tough climb, Corey, huh? Yes. So this one's a big day, that one or this one. So Corey, Matt, and I have hiked up the mountain to see if we could find a birch tree. Of course, we have birch trees in our yard. They're everywhere. And Matt was, said he knew where a, a particularly large one was, which is right here. We'll show you in a minute. But then on the way up here, we began to see large ones everywhere. So it's funny how things are, you know they're there. You know birch trees are there. But then once you actually start looking for them, you realize, oh my goodness, there's so many birch trees everywhere you look. So in days gone by, birch were part of the, um, I guess the tradition of spring, kind of like those spring tonics we were talking about. People would go what they called birch sapping. Now I never did that growing up. The most I ever did was chewing on a birch twig because it has a good flavor, like a sweet mini kind of flavor. But people that went birch sapping, there's a great video years ago that Bill Landry did uh, for the Heartland series, if you've ever seen that on WBIR, I think it is, channel. And so it was a whole family where every year they would go. And it, uh, the video's great. If I can find it, I'll link to it down below. But you can see they cut big strips out of the birch trees, and then they scrape the pulp out of them, and they eat that pulp. It's edible, and it's sweet. And I think they maybe they put sugar on it. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen the video. But you can see what a wonderful tradition it is for their family. It's just something they look forward to every year. One of my favorite Appalachian riders, Sydney Sailor Farr, she was from Berea. She talks about her family doing it every June. I think they did it in June. And they didn't do it to the manner um, like the one that Bill Landry shares, that family. But what they would do is they would go out and they would find a birch tree and they would cut a little square and then they would peel that square off making sure not to go all the way around the tree if you go all the way around the tree cutting they call it girdling that's girdling the trees and it'll actually kill the entire tree so they would cut that little part off and then they would um, pry the little square part of bark off and then they would scrape the pulp into they take spring water with them and they would have um, some, some good, nice, clean spring water, and they would scrape that off immediately into that water. And then they would do that until they had what they wanted. And then they would go home and they would add like maybe a, a little bit of sugar to it. And then they would let it sit for quite a time. And then they would strain the pulp out. And then that would be like a sweet, refreshing drink. You know, you got to think about in those days, there was no going to the store to get uh, some kind of soft drink or even some kind of juice. That, that just wasn't something they did. So they made up their own beverages like that that they look forward to. They might only get it one time a year, but that was something that they look forward to. So today you can do a Google or a search, even on YouTube or wherever, and you'll find all kinds of people tapping birch trees to get the liquid out of them. And if you just go out, if you have a birch tree and you just cut a little limb this time of the year, if you watch, you'll just begin to see water drip, drip, drip. It's not water, it's birch sap coming out of it. Along with those videos about tapping birch trees, you'll find all kinds of uh, people that are for it and people that are against it that say it'll harm the birch tree and, and other people that say no it doesn't harm them just like you know tapping maple trees doesn't harm them as long as you're ca um, careful and as long as you don't go too deep within the tree. 
other people will say no you should never do that and you should like look for limbs and cut limbs and then what and it takes longer but you can still get sap that way well why do people want to do that well just for the same reason sydney sailor Farr's family wanted to do it it's just a unique thing to do it's tasteful it's tasty it tastes good and then it's um you know, like a ride of spring. It's like a health tonic is the way some people look at it. You can also make birch teas, of course. That's a real popular thing. And, that, and there is uh, uh, studies and research that show that there's, you know, nutritional or health benefits to, to doing that. So today we're going to tap a birch. As you can see, now that we've realized we have so many, I've kind of debated about whether or not it would harm a tree, but we're actually going to try it. And then maybe after that, I'll be able to report back to you and see, does it actually harm it? Did the tree die or what happened to it? I can watch it. It's on my land. And we have, what are, what, what Matt, we're sitting here. How many within, uh, within eyesight? Probably mm -hmm. 40 or 50. Yeah. <laughs> Counting the little ones. Right. Some are little and some are big. So that's what we're going to show you how to do today. So Matt's getting his drill ready. I'm just gonna pan around. That's the birch right there that we're gonna use. How big do you think it is, Matt? Uh, the larger trunk of it? It's probably 10, 12 inches in diameter. 10 or 12 inches in diameter. If I span around, there's a great old big one right down there. You can see it's forked. I think that's a common thing with birch trees that they fork like that. How big do you think that one is, Matt? Uh, 15 or 16 inches. 15 or 16 inches. These corduroy pants on these uh, dry leaves is like a sled. I feel like if I took my legs out from under me, I might go all the way to the bottom with the chickens. So no one's ever tapped these trees uh, that I know of, and so at least since we've been living there here. But you can see, right, like right there, there is a, like they're all along it, there's little places where maybe something has injured the tree and it's healed itself over. And birch trees are naturally kind of cracky and peely, their bark is. So you can see, how far did you drill in, Matt? An inch and a half. About an inch and a half, and you can see the liquid's already coming out of the tree, which is pretty cool. We brought a straw to uh, stick in the hole to help. So now Matt's gonna tie the, we brought a jar, tie it on the tree so that it'll hold it in place. Matt knows so many knots, I have no clue. I can just tie a knot, that's all I can do. But he says when he was a little boy, Papa Tony, that's how he entertained him when he was, um, when they were deer hunting and he needed Matt to be quiet. <laughs> he would take Matt with him and he would uh, teach Matt how to tie knots while they were being quiet, you know, waiting on a, hopefully for a deer to come. You want Corey to hold it? Uh -uh. You wanna drink that, Corey? Kinda, of, but it's got that nice stuff in it. I don't really have a smell. I don't smell it. Like Maybe I just don't have enough of it in here. So now Matt's got the jar tied on there and you can see it's dripping out pretty quickly. So 
So some of the videos I watched said they would leave it overnight and come back, but I don't think we need to, we're not gonna do that. But even if we did, it would it would run over over during the night uh, and spill over. So we're not gonna do that, but you can see how quickly the jar's filling. So Matt scraped a little bit of the bark off. You'd have to go much deeper than that, of course, to get the pulp that they were talking about eating. But when you smell of it, it smells like a really sweet, like a spearmint almost, I guess I would say. Uh, Corey tasted a little bit of it and she says it tastes like toothpaste, which I don't think it's as pepperminty as toothpaste. More of a spearmint, sweet, mint, kind of. I don't know, I guess it tastes like birch. So while we're sitting here, uh, the first little jar that we used, we all took a drink out of it while we're sitting here watching this. And what we all decided was it really tastes like nothing. <laughs> it tastes like water, kind of. But so then that makes me think, I, that's probably the reason that Sydney Sailor Farr and the people in um, Bill Landry's video, why they actually ate the pulp, why you got the pulp. It may be that's where the sweet taste comes from because this basically just tastes like water. Get the limbs yeah, out. I'm not yeah. going up there and get them. No. I, I say let's cut that. the whole tree down and take it back. Just <laughs> <laughs> cut it all. We'll down. just eat birch for two or three weeks. We'll just party. chop it up into pieces and eat that till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. So while we're going to let this continue to drip, but then we're going to look for on the way back down, we'll probably slide, Matt's sliding while we're talking. It's so steep where we're at. Uh, we're going to look for some branches and we're going to take some little branches with us and then we're going to kind of chop them up and try to get the pulp out of them and let them soak in water like Sydney Sailor Far did. We could cut a square here and do all that, but we're not going to we're not going to do that. We're just going to try mashing up some limbs, I guess, and seeing if that imparts a, a greater or stronger birch flavor than this water that we're getting right now does. So it's starting to rain and we're not finished. So Matt's come up with this ingenious idea. He's tied his, what do you call it, Matt? Rucksack? Never shut. That's waterproof over top of it. So we're gonna go back to the house and then come back and check on it in a little while. Matt, you think that little one would be enough? Yeah. Probably. So Matt was going to harvest the bigger tree, but I think that one little limb, we're going to take it and see what we can do with it as far as making kind of an adaptation of what Sydney Sailor Farr's family did instead of actually cutting into the tree and scraping out the pulp. The rain chased us back home and we're on the porch now, set up on here. We just brought a little birch sapling with us. And instead of doing, like I said, instead of trying uh, Sydney Sailor for the recipe in her book, and by the way, the name of her book is More Than Moonshine. It's a fantastic cookbook for um, traditional Appalachian recipes, but it also has all kinds of stories and information. It's just wonderful, a wonderful book if you can find it. I suggest you get it. Anyway, but in hers, she, they, uh, like I said, they score like a square on the trunk of the tree. It needs to be a large tree, and then they pry that out, and then they would scoop out the inside of the bark and, and let it soak in water, add some sugar, and then later in the day, they would drain it, and then that would be a refreshing drink. So instead of doing that, we're going to try to just kind of, I guess, adapt her recipe to doing it kind of our way because we didn't really want to square in the tree although we have so many beech or excuse me although we have so many birch trees I'm sure that we could have We think we're going we've got all we're going to get in there and we're going to uh, let it soak probably for the rest of the day and then tonight we'll strain out all the pulp and then probably strain we've got so many little pieces in there probably use some cheesecloth and then uh, mix it with some sugar 
or put some sugar in this while we're waiting. I'm not sure how we'll do that. I guess Sydney Sailor Far said to put the sugar in, so we'll probably do that. And then we'll strain it, and I guess we'll drink it with supper tonight and see how it tastes. We come back to check on the birch sap and you can see our jar is completely full so we're going to take it down and head back to the house. birch trees like goat bluffs because there's tons of them in here. Corey and I are going to have a taste test. We're going to taste our, our, our two different birch saps that we come up with. So the first is just the clear that we come out of the, uh, come straight out of the tree. It's funny when uh, Matt and I went to get it on the way out, he said usually when you're carrying a jar like this with clear stuff in it, it's not birch. <laughs> it's not birch sap, but that's what this is. So we're gonna taste it. Let's taste it first. Or actually, before we do that, this is the, the stuff that we mixed up with the pulp and the sugar and the water, and so we're, we could let it be draining here. This is probably not gonna go good. You got this. It's going to fill up the thing probably yeah. first. That's probably good. And then we'll see. We'll strain that out. Oh, it's fizzy. <laughs> Bubbly. Bubbly and fizzy. So, okay. We'll let that sit there for a minute. And we're going to taste this first. Guinea pigs. I'm going to make a complete mess of this, likely. No. Go ahead. Go for it. You got it. That's okay. <laughs> I didn't want to do okay. the whole thing for what if you don't like yeah. it. Yeah, well, I think this is from what we tasted in the woods. It's just going to taste like water. So we'll see. Tastes like water. It's got a little taste to it, but it mostly just Not tastes much. like water. Mostly tastes like water. Huh. Okay. It's kind of weird. Tree water. <laughs> yeah, tree, tree water. water. Okay, well, let's get your little and we'll try this. See if this is Don't different. miss. Boy, we're both making messes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you good everywhere. Okay. Okay, let's try it. Now this has a strong smell. Okay, it tastes it definitely has a, a taste to it. So it tastes it's like a, root beer. Like a watered down version of root beer yeah, is what it tastes like to me. I was trying to think of what it smelled like earlier and I couldn't get it, but it smells like it root does beer. Taste like That's root what beer. it is. Yeah. In the beginning, when we first like tasted the pulp, it was more like Corey said toothpaste. I said more like like a sweet spearmint. I don't know. I guess that could be toothpaste. <laughs> but this does after it sit all day in the tastes with like the sugar and the pulp. Beer. Tastes, but it's sweet. So you mm -hmm. can imagine if you didn't have any kind of special drinks or like today you can get any kind of drink you want. This would be a real treat. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I believe that you could let it. Um, ferment and it would turn into like a birch beer. I've read about that. Uh, Sydney Sailor Farr didn't do that. Her family just drunk it like this just for a special treat. And I've read that with the birch, with both, with the birch sap, which just tastes like water, or with the birch, it's also called birch sap, but the, the, what we made out of the pulp and the sugar, that you could put them in the refrigerator and they would last like three to five days, probably till you drunk them, so you could enjoy them during that time. But we hope you've enjoyed this whole video about birch sapping. It's not something that I grew up with, but it's just something that I've, always, I've read about and always been interested in. So it was a fun day with the family just trying to, to try both ways. And of course, always getting it's always great to be outside and be in the woods. So we had a good time doing that. So we hope you'll leave a comment and let us know. Have you ever been birch sapping? Have you ever drunk birch tea or birch 
anything. <laughs> anything <laughs> birds, birds? Anything, yeah. Like we did the two different ones. But mostly we just hope you'll drop back by often as we celebrate Appalachia.